Hey pals and gals, time for another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be uh, discussing a little bit about background detail, uh, little uh, details that make a break a picture. Um, this is the before and this is the after. This is what we're trying to achieve at the end of our tutorial here. So uh, one thing that we're definitely going to talk about is uh, obviously the darkening of the background. Um, a little bit of the skin smoothing and a little bit of color shifting um, and then a little bit about uh, babies in this particular term um, and things you have to look out for the different uh, types of ages in terms of babies and I mean by days. In this case, uh, this baby is six days old. Um, and at this point, you can almost begin to see the ba baby acne that occurs. Uh, you also see quite a bit of pink in their skin, uh, which is, you know, normal, but sometimes it needs to be corrected for the particular shot you're trying to achieve. So anyways, let's begin. I'm going to go ahead and keep this group one and we'll use that later as a reference uh, to look at what it is what we're doing. So the first thing I did here is create a copy of my background and the th first thing I want to do is maybe darken um, some of these areas here just so that I know what I'm working with and I'm going to do that with the levels. Um, so now that I have that open, I'm just going to bring my midtones down and maybe even my shadows down as well. And then I'm going to use the mask that comes with my levels and get my brush tool. And I'm going to make sure I have a correct brush for this. Let me change brushes. Yes, I do have a lot of brushes. <laughs> uh, let's do this. Okay. So now that I have a fluffy brush, I'm going to go back and basically bring back the original color all except in the blackest black that I currently have here. And this just gives me a good, um, a good background, a good starting point um, to edit the work. Yes, there are other ways to do this, which actually I incorporate two different ways. Um, what I did as well, I, by the way, that was doing alt click on your layer and you can actually see your layer, see what exactly else needs to be corrected. Uh, you could technically also do this getting another layer. Um, I also, I don't fully recommend this way, but it, you know, sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes gets the work done and I'd get my brush tool and get black on top, especially this only is functional if you really want a pure black. And this is RGB black, not CMYK black. So you have to be careful what color mode you're in. So, you know, something like this might be kind of handy for you because even if, you know, you have the levels, you could do something like that instead of having to do um, maybe the stamp tool or, you know, the masks or something of the like. So there we go. And then I've also used this method to say maybe correct some of this. Maybe I don't want some of this um, pink to show. And I could do something like that and like that. And that's okay. Okay. So at this point, you can also go, I'm going to make another layer for, you know, just in case. And I'm going to make my brush really, really kind of fluffy. Um, let me show you where I'm at. Hardness is about 50%. My pixel, you know, it, it, the size is about 15 pixels. Um, and I'm just going to start masking away. Like I said, yes, you can. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit softer. The, so the softness is going to come down quite a bit. Let's see, maybe 25? Yeah, that's fine. Um, you can mask this, and actually it's almost always recommended that you do mask this. Um, this is just my, I'm in a rush to get these done, or they're not ultra important, or, you know, I don't really feel like doing it, because whatever may be the reason. In this case, 
I'm just wanting to go by fast. So, there you go. And actually, I'm going to make this a little bit softer. Remember that, you know, even though the cloth may, may actually very well move in that way, it just doesn't look super natural. So, da -da -da. let's see, move this right along. Yes, I'm going into the pink. Will it matter? Nope, because nobody's going to know except you. And now what I'm going to do is get another layer, put it underneath all these other clear layers. I'm going to make it white, and now I can kind of see what it is that I'm painting. I'm going to just do this. And the way you go from this point to this point without drawing, I'm not doing this, I'm doing that. If you notice, that's a difference. What I do is click and then hold down the shift key and click wherever I want the line to continue and it creates a straight line. So, a little tip for you guys. And it kind of makes the work going by faster. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna, uh, oh, of course. Yeah, I put it on the wrong layer. All right, let's draw that again. Layer five, here we go. Oh, there we go, on the right layer. Surprising what good layers and, you know, naming your layers will do, which I always recommend, but I don't always follow it, so. At this point, I might also wanna clean up these areas. You know, might as well, why not? And if you notice, there's two different blacks going on here, and that's because I don't have a very uh, clean palette here. Um, if my mask was fairly well cleaned and not, uh, if you notice, I'm not painting it black, I'm not working on my this black layers here. I'm actually working in the um, levels mask. And what I'm gonna do is actually paint it over like so and then go back and clean up that mask like this. So now we have a nice crisp black and I continue doing this all the way around and actually you might want to hit the back dash button. It's the button right underneath the backspace key and this allows you to take a look at your mask in red which is, it, it almost looks like quick mask mode, but this is what your mask truly looks like. So when you hit it again, it disappears. So it's kind of convenient. And also you can see everything that's currently red, it means it's been masked out. So this area that's not the baby, but the, the black, you wanna go over uh, so that you don't have two different blacks. So when you print or, you know, you're other designer buddies take a look at your work say hey that looks a little odd let's um what's up with that <laughs> or you know mighty artistic people take a look at it and say that looks odd because it will because if you were my friend and i took a look at your work i would notice it and i will let you know very quickly because that's what good friends and good designers do to let you know hey that looks funky fix it all right, that's extra quick. And actually, I'm gonna do this area too, because I'm gonna do the little ship click business, like so. You know, I don't know whether it's because I want to go by really quickly, um, editing, that is, or if it's because my style of editing has changed that I really edit very quickly now so if I'm going too fast please let me know um, you can leave me a comment or send me a message either way now like that stop it uh, 
see my mask going again because I feel like I'm not quite up to par there. Okay, see you can tell the two blacks right in here. So I'm going to go back to my layer 5 where I was painting in with black, with pure black. Yeah, I guess you can use pure black, but I mean if you've already made the layer, the, the levels layer, why not use it to your advantage? I'm using the black just to basically clean up some of these areas. And y when you begin using Photoshop, you think it is just a uh, photo manipulation tool, but it can also be a wonderful addition to a painting tool. If you've never done a painting in Photoshop, I highly recommend it. Maybe I'll have a tutorial on that because it's, it's really rather uh, cool. I if you've done any kind of artwork, um, traditional painting, it's very strange to go into the digital world. But if you go from digital world to the art, the traditional artwork, it is... Uh, a breath of fresh air uh, it's just ah it's exciting and just an entirely different feeling so anyways here we are and we've made no change to our current baby here so let's first I'm gonna talk about the different ways that you can get rid of this baby acne and then we'll talk about techniques to take care of some of this pink if you don't want it I personally like it but it, it will depend on the baby on the color scheme on your own personal preferences you know what I mean so obviously the first choices uh, that we have here are clone stamp tool if you are uh, working with CS5 or CXS your spot healing brush tool will also have content aware which is kind of handy so you could use your spot healing brush tool your healing brush tool and your patch tool and each one of them come you know each one of them have their own advantages so let's start with the spot healing brush tool which I do like um don't use it all the time because I don't like it even though content aware is pretty accurate sometimes uh, the skin texture changes and especially in babies the texture of a newborn the look of a newborn is entirely different than you know say a baby that's you know a couple months old or even a couple weeks old the the new baby born look is within the first 10 days so something to keep in mind so i'm just clicking through some of this baby acne here and there and i'm also taking also some of the redness out not a lot because um the redness will be fixed later with a little uh hue and saturation uh shift so as you can tell, you know, we've cleaned up some of this area, not a lot. This is a timed process. So now let's use the healing brush tool. And the healing brush tool, um, I'll link a tutorial as to how to use the link if you haven't seen um, how to use the healing brush tool. Um, but basically, you pick out a spot that looks like the skin is nice and of the same type of texture and maybe even the same color. And by color, I mean, obviously, this skin is a different, is less pink than the one on the face. And the one on the forehead is maybe a shade or two darker than the one on the cheek because the light is hitting, you know, the baby at a different angle. So uh, what we want to do, obviously, is I've cleaned up this little bitty area here. So let me start by clicking there and I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm just basically gonna begin painting. Now if you notice the area that's currently being painted is getting smoother, but the problem with doing this continuously and not picking up a different spot, say somewhere here and going and doing that is that then you end up getting a, an area that looks odd. I don't know if you can tell exactly there. Um, so, I know we're going. Now, let's use the patch tool. And the patch tool works so that you say you have your spot that you pick out, and this is the area you want to remove. So now you drag this spot to something that's clean and nice and pretty, and it replaces it. So now we've done that little spot right there. 
So I'm not going to go into, uh, um, you know, completely cleaning up the face because um, we're going to move this tutorial along. But um, actually, let's use the clone stamp tool, which also has its uses. I'm going to remove this little spot and I'm going to get some of this baby forehead wrinkle and then some of this right here. And now the clone stamp tool works by exactly copying the area that you've selected. So you hit the Alt key and this crossbar comes up and you click the area that you do like and then you click the next area that you don't like and it begins to do an exact copy. So I'm going to make an example of this. I'm going to click in the eye and I'm going to put the eye here. You know, a little creepy, but you get the point here. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to show you guys, which is a lovely fascinating filter to me. I'm going to make a copy of my background copy two, like so. So that's copy three. I'm going to go up to filter blur and you thought I was going to say Gaussian blur. No, no, no. I'm going to do surface blur. Now, obviously this is a lot of blur and yes, you can change it. Uh, I'm actually going to leave it like this uh, radius 36 and threshold 14. Uh, mainly so that I can show you a little bit about what happens with the color and with the skin tone. So I'm going to hit OK on that. I'm going to make a mask and I'm going to turn this mask black as to conceal uh, the all the blur that we've done. I'm also going to get a brush and make the hardness to zero and I'm going to make it a relatively large brush. So now here we are. Oh, a little tidbit, if your brush, you can see the circle of my brush currently, but if your brush for some reason disappear, you won't want to hit um, your caps. Uh, sometimes if you only get the crosshairs and you can't see the size of your brush, it's because you have your caps locks pressed. So if you press it again, there you go. It comes back and it's like magic. Anyways, um, make sure you have white so as to reveal what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 15, which is really low. I'm going to start brushing away some of the pimples. It's not going to be perfect. Um, this is just a different technique. And I'm basically smoothing out the skin. You don't really want to over smooth it. You don't want it to look like plastic. This is a real baby, not a toy doll. So let's keep it that way, okay? And I'm just, you know, going in, smoothing out the skin a little bit. That's just why the opacity, I've changed the opacity to 10, by the way. Um, just going in really softly. I'm going to change the opacity a little bit higher, say it, you know, 30. Like so. And now, let's take a look at the, you know, before, after, before, after. Let's zoom into that. Before, after, before, after. I'm going to talk a little bit about this after um, in terms of some of this redness. Yes, you can clone it out. Yes, you can, you know, spot heal it or heal brush or patch tool even. But I have another lovely suggestion for you guys. Why don't you try your hue and saturation? So I have that open right now. And what I'm going to do is under my mask, under my colors, I'm going to select red. And then I'm going to get the eyedropper tool, not the plus one, but just the eyedropper tool. I'm going to pick the red that I don't want. So I'd say maybe this red. And then I'm going to get the minus eyedrop eye tool. I'm going to select the color that I do want, which would be this other light pink tone. Now, you really don't see a difference here, but what you can do is select under the hue. I'm going to bring the colors all the way down. And now everything that is this blue color is going to be the color that's currently selected. And everything in the pink or unselected color or anything other color is not going to be selected. So what's going to happen here? I'm going to make this back to zero. And I'm going to slow, very, very slowly start climbing up the numbers. And you're not going to, it's a really subtle change, but if you notice 
this little spot on her forehead begins to change and her overall color is becoming yellow. So yes, uh, some of the modifications aren't going to be perfect, and in which case you can actually change some of this. So let's go back to this uh, crazy color. And what I'm going to do is get the minus uh, eyedropper tool, and I'm going to say, you know what, this cheek area, that's, that's a good color, so let's take some of that away. And all this area here, that's really nice color. Let's make sure we don't get rid of any of that. Okay, now let's go back and make this zero and that's where we're at and I start to slowly climb up the numbers okay now if you could see that spot has basically blended into her skin but also we've changed the entire color of uh, our image so let's use the mask and let's completely make it in black as to conceal everything that we've done and get our brush once again and I'm gonna bring the opacity to 10 and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to slowly start to paint in that area. And what's going to happen is it's just a little bit of that yellow, uh, green kind of color is going to neutralize the, the spots. This is basically the same technique that's used in makeup, um, concealers and brush, uh, concealers to conceal under eye shadows or pimples or anything like that is, is the same kind of technique. So basically whatever color you have on your skin that you want to conceal, whether in Photoshop or in life, you basically use the opposite color to uh, create, uh, how should I say this, it neutralizes each other. That's a good way to say that. Okay, so here's the before and after. You can clearly see how, you know, the red spot is gone. The texture there I'm not entirely happy with, but that's also why we have that blur, um, which, like I said, doesn't work on everything. It's not meant for every kind of use, but it is a handy little trick to have. So now you can see some of the redness is gone now while I'm still maintaining the rest of the color uh, pink. So this is where we stand. Um, I'm going to take a look at what I did before. And as you can see, some of that darkness was still left in from the levels. Um, and I went back in and got some of that pink on there. And I think it's a little bit further smoothed out in this particular than in ours. But overall, I think this is a good technique to use for babies. Um, the same can be said if, say, you take a picture and the baby has jaundice. Uh, basically, you would do uh, the opposite. So there's too much yellow in the skin. So in this case, you, instead of choosing the reds, you would pick out the yellows and do the exact same process. So I hope that this um, has helped you guys if you have any um, children or babies or if you're a photographer like myself um, you know it helps you edit it helps you learn a couple tricks if you have any questions please let me know and uh, I'll try to get back to you so thanks guys bye